Let us begin as we live in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, as we continue this Lenten journey towards Easter joy, we pause as we prepare to receive our Lord Jesus in His Holy Eucharist by calling to mind our sinful
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through His Spirit dwelling in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Send word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but it is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? 
So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone laid across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have to say this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to him, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what had been done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, peace be with you. Today we hear the awesome story of the rising of Lazarus, the resuscitation, if you will, a physical rising of Lazarus from the dead so that we could see what was coming. For those who believe in Jesus as the resurrection and the life, for those who see him fully as the Messiah, have a taste of what is When I was preparing for my homily, I could not help to think of one thing. What did Lazarus do for those four days? What did Lazarus experience in those time of being in that tomb? Experiencing the sleep of death. It's an important question for us to ask because the reality of death is that separation of body and soul. The reality of death is a place for which one goes, seeking truth, life, and peace. The name Lazarus itself means to whom God has saved. How beautiful it is that Jesus tells a parable about Lazarus and the rich man. We're all familiar with the story. That Lazarus was a poor man, and when both the rich man and Lazarus dies, they both go to the place of the dead. But Lazarus, because he wanted for much in his life, he found comfort in the bosom of Abraham. For the Jews, the place of peace and rest in death is in the bosom of Abraham, meaning that a child of Abraham is comforted by the promise of the covenant. Jesus tells this story knowing that his friend, Lazarus, would be the one that he would use as a vehicle of what it was like to experience a resurrection, a new life, because of Christ, the Messiah. So to answer the question, what did he do in these four days until Jesus called him forth from the tomb? Lazarus, come out. Well, I really believe in all honesty that Lazarus went to that place, Hades. He went to that place where all those who were waiting for the Messiah for the ability to know what eternal life would look like. He went there first to come.
contemplate his own life. To imagine what his life was and what it meant. How did he live it? How did he experience God's presence? And secondly, he reflected on his life in his friendship to Jesus. Who's Jesus? He was the one who was to come. What did Lazarus experience as a friend of Jesus? Incredible miracles, his teachings, certainly his love and friendship. But it wouldn't be until Lazarus experienced physical death that he knew what everyone wanted to know. And that is what he knew. That Jesus was the Messiah. What his sister Martha would proclaim, that you are the Christ, the one who was to come. So Lazarus takes this opportunity He's literally the first evangelist to the dead. For those who, throughout all history, waiting for the Messiah, he goes to them and he expresses the reality of who Jesus is. Wait till you see this. Wait till you hear this. Your time is upon you for the fullness of your life to be experienced. The time in the tomb for four days is significant. The Jews felt and believed that the soul remained with a body for about four days before it would depart. So Lazarus was dead. He was really dead. There was no question. Even his sister said, it's going to be a pretty bad smell. But when Jesus calls Lazarus forth from the tomb, Lazarus now has a story to tell. A story to tell not only to those who await the coming of the kingdom, but a story to tell that in death, those who are faithful will experience the fullness of life. Not a resuscitation of the physical body, but a full divine gift of perfection. In this time of our need, in this time when we have been sequestered by an edict now to stay home, we too are experiencing a tomb, a concealment of our lives. And in that concealment, we too, like Lazarus, must first evaluate who we are. How are we living? So many living in fear right now. But those who live in faith in the reality of our vulnerability, of our own human weakness, our own mortality, we should take advantage of it and say, how am I living my life? How is my life an experience of Christ Jesus, not only his teachings and his love, but his promise? And finally, I think in this time of the tomb of this pandemic, we should be evangelizers. We should remind people that Christ Jesus is Lord. He is the one who rises from the dead. He will rise us not only because of his love for us through this pandemic, but he will rise us even when our mortality takes the life that we know. So what should be our mission this week? I think it should be simply this. That the reality of what has happened around us has entombed us into a new life. One most of us are not comfortable with. But yet it should be one first of peace. Because the presence of the Lord remain, remains with us. It should be one of reflection. And it should also be one of telling the good news. That he who has come will rise and call us to the fullness of life. Soon Jesus will call us, as he called Lazarus, from this tomb, from this darkness, from this fear, from this isolation. He will soon call us forth to come out and experience the resurrection and the hope of eternal life. 
How perfect it would be if he calls us out of this tomb in this pandemic for Easter Sunday. But whenever he calls us out, we will come forth. And we will, like Lazarus, know the meaning of death in the relationship to the fullness of life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So this morning when I receive our Lord Jesus Christ, His body and blood in the sacred mass, I will be receiving on behalf of you, on behalf of your needs, on behalf of your desires to be strengthened with the truth that was so freely a part of our lives while we remained entombed in this time of testing. When I offer my communion for you today, it will be to seek a deeper gift of God's love in this Lenten journey that has been imposed upon us, different than any other journey that we've imposed on ourselves in past months. But do this. In this time of being in tune, taken away from your daily life, the things for which you saw and experience this freedom. Take one hour, a half hour, if an hour is too long, of silence in your home. Everyone that's in your home, tell them, okay, this is the hour that nothing is going to play. No technology, no talking, just to experience the silence of God's presence. Because it is in that silence when he calls your name, when he calls you from this, you will rejoice. You will proclaim that death has no power over us. No fear has power over us. No isolation from the things for which are good in his creation have power over us. For Jesus is the Son of the living God. He is the one who has come. And I promise, I will do the same. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring forth our petitions and prayers to the Lord. Trust 
of the Lord and His power in the death-dealing situations of their own lives. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread we offer, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, and will come for us the bread of life. Bless be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by the sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in the one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim.
holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, gave you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, once again giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. A spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually to my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and then unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As you may know, uh, we're taping uh, the Sacred Mass sometime on Saturday evening. Hopefully you can hear how wonderful it is to be here and hear the rain and the thunder. Uh, it just speaks so much to Jesus calling us forth from that darkness into the resurrection and life. So uh, just keep that in mind as we're entombed. Let us continue to be like Lazarus with great hope knowing that Jesus will raise us up to our lives again and even more importantly, into the resurrection. As you know, I would like you to uh, take time to pick up a bulletin uh, here when you make your visit uh, through the week, or uh, of course, the bulletin will be online. Uh, remember this, I know we have this new edict now, it's called the Stay Home Edict. And only go out unless you're doing something life-sustaining. So this is a life-sustaining place. It's open 24 hours, seven days a week, and you need to come. Bring your family, uh, 
course, there's plenty of room in the church. We can stay our, our distance from each other even better than they could do it at the Giant Eagle. So don't hesitate to come at any time to pray here or at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton where the church is open from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, this coming Tuesday, uh, Father Ron Yell, after his uh, private mass, will expose the Blessed Sacrament uh, for adoration from uh, early morning until uh, probably about 3 o'clock. Uh, we're doing that because it's a big enough period of time uh, so that if people come and go, well, we will certainly uh, be keeping our social distancing and also keeping from gathering as a large crowd. However, Father Ronyell and I will offer confessions on Tuesday from 11 a.m. till uh, 3 p.m. So we will be here in the church to hear confessions. There will not be evening confessions on Tuesday, but since everybody is sequestered to their home, uh, you want to get out, you know, get out of your tomb, uh, come for confession, we'll be here for that. Also, someone had made it known to me that uh, there's a movement now, which I think is really a nice movement, is that to help us feel the security and the presence of our Lord Jesus uh, during this time of the pandemic, uh, they're suggesting that you get, get an image of the uh, divine mercy, the image that has Jesus, I trust in you, and, and put it on your door of your house uh, so that people who drive by know and see that you are protected, just like in the Passover, you know, the blood of the Lamb, we are truly protected by the blood of the Lamb, so that through this time, uh, we will not be alone. Uh, I have found like 500 uh, little images uh, that will be uh, here at the church is for you to pick up if you want to just put a little uh, picture in your door, uh, maybe even, you know, in your car door. Uh, so when, you know, you're driving really kindly, uh, people will see that you're driving under the protection of the Lord as well. Uh, just a couple other announcements. I want, hopefully, that you will uh, continue to watch OSM, uh, Operation Safe Mode. This video is uploaded to that. Um, our last episode was about um, our Sunday obligation and also the communion facts. How are we doing that now that we're uh, sequestered to our tombs? How do we live that out? Also, just remember that uh, the diocese and Lenten appeal is still going on. Uh, we have not yet received um, our goal yet for the diocese, so if you haven't made a pledge, uh, it's not too late. Uh, you can mail that into the office and we'll make sure that the bishop gets that. As well as the offertory, Sunday offertory. Uh, you can do that online now. Just go to our webpage and click the button to uh, give them online as well. So just keep that in mind as we continue our work here as a parish. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Mary conceived without sin. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended in peace to glorify Christ by your life. Thanks be to God.
an act of faith in the real presence. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you are truly present in this holy sacrament under the signs of bread and wine as you were when dying upon the cross for the salvation of all mankind, or as you are now enthroned in glory in heaven at the right hand of the Father. You said that you would give us yourself as the bread of life, which if we eat, we shall live forever. I believe this truth because you are truth itself. With confidence in your loving forgiveness, therefore, I approach your altar conscious that my unworthiness to receive you is outweighed by your desire to be united with my soul. You desire to nourish it on its earthly pilgrimage until the day when I shall be with you in the eternal banquet to feed on the unveiled beauty of your presence forever. Amen.